Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us for this very wonderful session. One request, if I may, if you can perhaps move down closer. We're expecting the multitudes to join us in just a few minutes. They're finishing up their lunch, and they'll be coming to join us very, very soon. So I have front row seats here, so please come and join us. This is a very dynamic session, and we're very, very excited here. The first time we've done a session like this, youth and behavioral change to combat climate change. So something that's of tremendous interest to us all, and what we've been hearing throughout the past two days is a lot of people, and probably a lot of men in suits, talking about the fact that we have to hand this over to the youth. So here we are at this session involving the youth and really getting people involved and asking what is going on in terms of the youth in this country who will ultimately be getting ready in the next 10 years to be taking over the mantle of leadership which when it comes to climate change and when it comes to the green economy is of vital importance to every one of us. So um, we will have just one hour on this session, so we want your full attention and hopefully we'll have time to involve and get one or two questions in it. But it gives me tremendous pleasure today to introduce to you our wonderful moderator for this session. We have a fabulous team here, as you can see, lined up. So please, a very, very warm welcome from all of you to the founder of Between the Sips, Alanud Almahi. So, Alanud, my dear, thank you so much. Thank you. Can you hear me? Is the mic working? Can you hear me? Yes, great. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon. Thank you, Etna, for the introduction. My name is Alanud Mali, and I'm very happy to be here with um, the panel of experts that we have. This is going to be a very dynamic and uh, hopefully energetic session, so thank you very much. We appreciate your coming here on time, so we're gonna honor that by starting on time. Um, so um, I'm gonna start by introducing the panelists, uh, starting from uh, Dubai. So Dubai Abul Hul is an Emirati author, artist, and a youth ambassador, and is here to represent the youth. Next to her is Ms. Davina Rappaport. She's a social media manager at Merck Line. So she's going to give us some really good insights on social media. Next to her is Mr. Walid Salman, Executive Vice President for Strategy and Business Development at Dubai Water and Electricity Authority, Diwa, and member of Dubai Supreme Council of Energy. Also, we have Anne Rotbel Jorgensen, She's a project manager, a manager at Climate Ambassador Education in the city of Copenhagen. Last but not least is His Excellency Dr. Thani Ahmed Zioudi. He's a permanent representative of the UAE to IRENA, Director of Energy and Climate Change, UAE Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Thank you all for coming here with us and for sharing your insights with us. Before we start, I actually want to start with, um, since we have some of the audience joining us here, I want to have a sense of how many youth do we have here in the, in, yeah, yes, we are all young in our souls. Define the age group you're looking for. Anyone here below the age of 29, I apologize, just raise your hand. That's per perfect. If you know someone under the age of 29, raise your hand. That's also perfect. So this session is for you. Um, you will also be part of it. Um, in the end, we're, we're going to ask you to come up with some questions uh, for the panelists. So um, I really enjoy picking, up, picking on the youngest member of every group. So I'm going to start with you, Dubai. Um, uh, if you can just uh, um, tell us about your uh, general insights on, uh, on youth and climate change, and then after that, we're going to continue with the other panel. Yeah, uh, sure. First of all, I'd like to thank um, the forum for involving the youth. I think, as you said, more often than not, we always have conferences that urge uh, action within the younger generations, but unfortunately, we're not necessarily included in the discussion table. So I think this movement is uh, something myself and my generation appreciate a lot. Um, I think what's important, it's important to integrate the youth because um, Starting from my generation, maybe slightly older and younger, uh, we live in, a, in an increasingly globalized world. 
and we live in a time where borders between countries are being blurred. You know, issues that happen across the globe are our issues. You know, we no longer have issues that are constrained within, you know, geographical maps. Um, and as the youth, because of social media, we are, uh, we are we're sharing our concerns, we're sharing our views on, you know, different issues, especially in regards of climate change. So, um, as I said, you know, we live in a very unique time where the youth are actually represented as one and should be targeted as one group as opposed to you know, being separate uh, by, by country and borderlines. And I think that is very important. Um, uh, maybe I'm slightly biased, but I believe that uh, we, are the, we are the targeted audience that actually has the best power to, to make a difference and to make a change. All we need is to have a generation that is aware of the issues and uh, whether it's through education or through conferences like this, I think it's very important. This is how you can actually inspire younger people to implement change and become leaders in, the, in different fields, such as climate change and the economy. Thank you. So I think a lot of really meaningful strides have been taken in the climate change sphere by these climate change champions. And, you know, climate change is increasingly on the radar now. But, you know, as with a lot of social media campaigns and, and social social change campaigns, there's a phenomenon of slacktivism. So slacktivism is where people take small steps, like liking a, fo uh, a post on Facebook, that has little to no effect except making them feel, feel better. Um, I think there's a lot of potential in, of social media in, in, in promoting this cause, but a lot of the challenges are either willfully or you know, otherwise overlooked. But you know, one of the biggest challenges, I think, is a psychological one. Climate change is a huge and complex issue and you know world leaders and governments are really struggling to tackle it. So what chance does a 15 year old in rural Poland armed only with a Twitter account have? Um, so I think that's one of the, the important things is to break it down and that's why I think initiatives like Earth Hour is, is really important and really successful. It takes this hugely complex things uh, this issue and breaks it down into something that's tangible and actionable. Uh, the second thing is, is a question of, of tactics. You know, the attention span of Generation Y and Millennials is scarily short. There's a reason why Instagram only allows for 15 second videos and Twitter is only 140 characters. Um, so com communicating complex and protracted messages can be really difficult via social media. But don't despair, I actually think it's an opportunity to communicate one message fully but then do it multiple times. And the more you can engage your audience and the more you can stay top of mind, it's about thinking like a marketer. And, and the more you can create brand awareness and brand preference and engagement, the more involved people feel. Which brings me to my next point. It's about thinking like a marketer. You know, Gen Y and, and millennials are spending an increasingly an increasing amount of time online, and their online journey needs to be seamless. The text of a post on Facebook needs to be interesting, the video content needs to be engaging, there needs to be a clear call to action, um, which might lead them to the website, which is optimized for mobile, um, and then eventually get their email address for more direct communication via that medium. And finally, I think it's um, one of the, the things that has perhaps been overlooked slightly is the importance of defining objectives and metrics and really thinking about in advance, what does success mean to you? Are you trying to raise awareness or are you trying to raise money or are you mobilizing the masses? One of the biggest social change campaigns in 2012 was the Joseph Kony campaign. You know, it, it highlighted a warlord in Africa and the campaign was centered around make him so famous that the world can no longer ignore his crimes that he's committed. So the video was viewed hundreds of millions of times, uh, some money was raised, but ultimately he's still at large. You know, last year it was the no makeup selfie where women were posting photos of themselves without makeup to raise awareness for cancer, but really, is anyone not aware of cancer? Uh, a UNICEF campaign really summed it up nicely. It said, like us on Facebook and we'll vaccinate zero children against polio. But, you know, if you make a donation, you might actually see a change. So I think rather than being stressed out and freaked out by some of the challenges, make it work for you. And I think um, there's a lot of potential to have really successful social media campaigns for your agenda. Thank you. Mr. Wadi. Yeah, first I would like to welcome everyone here in this hall. And uh, I mean, uh, when you talk about youth, you talk about energy, you talk about uh, innovation, creativity, happiness. So I think that 
th this should um, bring a message that how we uh, very much concern and care about the youth and how to engage the youth to be part of the cycle. So what I want to touch is uh, give an example about United Arab Emirates, like how the leadership, the late Sheikh Zayed, handled uh, the sustainability and created um, today. I mean, if we go back to 1971, where the establishment of uh, the country uh, put together and becomes as one country, and if we, uh, how the leadership focus on sustainability and to set the foundation for the youth. So if we go back, the number of schools or universities, very limited. And every emirate maybe one or two high school university. And uh, as a uh, high school, and if you go with the university, maybe you have only one university was open in Al Ain. Uh, and in order to build the capacity and to prepare the youth to be part of the, of the strategy, then you have to have the education. So, I mean, there is no comparison. Today, if we look at the number of uh, schools, uh, universities, like local and international, the, a big time we can see the strategy of leadership, how they build it. In, uh, um, I can see it's very fast, but it's organic growth. I mean, they consider every component that will help the youth to be a leader, to continue um, the, the journey of success, the, the journey of su sustainability. We look at it as um, um, uh, a cycle. I mean, it is uh, whereas like generation after generation. And what they do is uh, they should just hand over the task to the generation to come. But I think with, uh, with the transition that they should first do the preparation, we should uh, do very good preparation for the youth in order to take over the, the strategy or the vision of the leadership. So the vision of one, I mean, um, today if you ask anybody within United Arab Emirates in terms of youth, they will say, if you tell them what you want to be or what, what, uh, how you see the UAE going by 2021, they'll tell you that to be among us the best country in the world. So today the, the vision is one, everyone is engaged, and this is because of the leadership. We have one strategy and one vision, that everyone is working toward achieving that vision. So the, the, it is uh, it's a commitment of every uh, person in United Arab Emirates that to put an effort to grow organically, but in uh, targeting one vision, which is a sustainability. Uh, with that, Definitely, we're going to have to put enablers in terms of education, um, lifestyle, uh, the technology uh, today, where the empowerment uh, that we're giving to the youth. And uh, this year, for example, uh, the leadership announced the year 2015, it's a year of innovation and creativity. So, this is only targeting the youth. So, all the whatever we see of initiatives and programs, it's mainly targeting the youth to be really prepared to take the leadership in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone for inviting me and I really hope that what we are doing in the city of Copenhagen can inspire all of you. What we learned yesterday and today and I think that everyone here can agree on that is that it is a fact that the coming generation will face complex challenges related to climate change. Therefore, it is important for us in Copenhagen that the future generation are capable to responding on these challenges. I think that we, through practical, creative, and innovative learning programs, like we do in the Climate uh, Ambassador Education in Copenhagen, are working to giving the children and, and young people uh, inside skills and commitment needed to take the fight for a brighter future. We educate the leaders of tomorrow, we sometimes say in Copenhagen. And the aim with the education is that give the next, the next generation to become active citizens that take part in creating a sustainable future. And I think that is very necessary that we as adults and what can you say, like project manager as myself, teachers, everyone who works with children and youth can give them the education they need to take over from us. 
So that was very shortly. I hope that we later can discuss a little bit about like how can you actually do that? What are we like? What did we need to do? I thought that there was like some young people in here, but I think that we have to lead the way. We have to teach them. We have to educate them, as Valid just said. Uh, and I think that we are responsible for that. Thank you. Thank you, Lenore. Uh, first of all, I would like to start by uh, thanking our uh, uh, host, uh, Liwa, uh, and uh, special thanks to my uh, dear friend, Walid Salman, for uh, the excellent organization. Uh, the youth is really something which is uh, very close to, uh, to, to the heart of our leaders. And uh, we saw, especially this year, uh, after the announcements of the UAE, uh, UAE 2019 as an innovation uh, year, uh, the, mo the concentration of the leaders uh, has become on the education and how we are going to capitalize on the youth. Uh, the, our story with the, with the climate change has begun a while ago. Uh, however, our real engagement uh, w with the negotiation and how aggressively we're moving ahead with the climate change has started uh, on the last 10 to 6, uh, six years. Uh, what we have noticed that uh, throughout the climate change uh, spheres, uh, most of the negotiation has been, negotiators have been there for the last 20 years since the, the first uh, 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 Earth Summit in Rio in, 2000, uh, in 1992. And most of the negoti negotiators, when we go and attend those negotiating meetings, we saw them, they, they attended the first, first COBS conference parties, number one and two and three, which, which means that they have been there for quite some time. When it comes to, to, to the UAE and our participation, we managed to build very, very strong young team within the last 10 years, which I really probably can not say that we are the youngest negotiator team attending those meetings and we have a real voice in those negotiation, negotiation meetings. Uh, the team uh, uh, within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, as well as the uh, supporting, supported by the other stakeholders, most of them are below 30, 30 years old and they're really uh, very strong, competent. They know the subjects and they know how even to keep pushing for the, for the interest of, uh, of the country. Uh, the, the team stays until uh, midnight. They even stays uh, continuously for the next morning, uh, similar to what the others uh, are doing. And I'm really proud of, 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 of the team. And this is, it's not, hap it's not uh, happening by itself. It's happening because of our uh, intention and by the strong support by our leaders, namely by His Highness Sheikh Abdullah, uh, bin Zayed, our Minister of Foreign Affairs, as well as the Minister, uh, His Excellency Dr. Sultan Al Jabbar, who is so keen when it comes to youth engagements and to make sure that those, uh, those uh, uh, UAE nationals are sitting at the UAE table and delivering our uh, interests and messages. Uh, what we did, Dras, it's too difficult to build co co competencies uh, uh, and uh, skills in the field. The, as, 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 as has been mentioned, the climate change is so complex. Uh, however, we, we managed to bring the right expertise and we managed to bring the right UAE uh, nationals who's really interested in the subject to deliver and to go after the UAE, the UAE uh, interest. Uh, in the last six years, we managed to, uh, to compile most of the sustainability and uh, uh, UAE engagements and climate change. So we managed to have very strong database. The, 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 uh, uh, the youth which uh, that we have within uh, the negotiation teams are really capable to go speak in front of ministers, leaders, uh, experts, as one of those people who, who has, been, have, has been there in the, in the market for quite some time. Let me just quickly highlight a couple of uh, initiatives, if uh, that's okay, uh, which we're really proud of. And, uh, uh, in, in Abu Dhabi, for example, Masan Institute is uh, one of the institutions which really uh, brings to the market very young, excellent, competent uh, students who really uh, have the caliber of students who, who, who's graduating from uh, MIT. So we raise the bar very high. We know the capabilities of, of the students who are coming out from Master Institutes. We, we're, not only, we're not only looking after the people who, who's only graduating from, uh, from um, Masters and Bachelors. We even dig into the detail, into the, to, to, the, uh, to the other levels where we targeting the school's uh, students. We start 
uh, hitting and uh, working on the uh, curriculum programs when it comes to sustainability and climate change. We start uh, developing and encouraging schools to, uh, to uh, to take the, the sustainability and climate change topic as one of their uh, themes within the schools. We launched Zaid for Synergy Prize, which is uh, uh, a while ago, and uh, three years ago we included the prize for uh, high school uh, uh, category, which, which aimed to encourage the future generation to think about sustainability in their daily uh, behavior and daily activities. Uh, I'm proud to say that we, today we signed an agreement and a MOU between uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs and DIWA to uh, support the uh, Carbon Ambassador Program. We had uh, uh, an ambassador who attended with us uh, last year in uh, one of the climate change uh, 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 negotiations. Uh, we're not only uh, looking after those MOUs and, uh, for media and publicity, here in the UAE we, we say and we really implement and that's why the, those engagements are, uh, are really crucial to make sure that those, student, to those people, those youth, are going to achieve our uh, uh, government's vision by 2021, that we're going to become one of the top five governments around the world. And we, uh, we really uh, see the youth are the main vehicles to achieve this, this objective. Thank you very much. Thank you all for your insight. I believe that with, with your insight and with the information you're going to give us, uh, we're going to achieve the outcome of this session. Uh, which is to come up with solutions and uh, uh, ideas for initiatives that could involve uh, the youth in uh, involving them in the debate and the discussion of the climate change. Um, I believe that th there were three words that, rep that were repetitive between the panels, which were innovation, education, and also the leadership support. I want to start with Mr. Walid Salman. Yesterday was the graduation of the Carbon Ambassador uh, program, congratulations, and can you please tell us more about it? What did it involve? Thank you, thank you. I just would like to thank uh, my friend, Dr. Thani, when he said that we just signed today an MOU. Honestly, we appreciate their effort because we just signed a paper today, but they have been working with us since we started the program without any documents. So this is the way that we do it uh, in the United Arab Emirates. Um, Paper is only paper, but the work we do it on the ground. And uh, um, talking about the Carbon Ambassador Program, it's uh, honestly a, um, a program where it came uh, in the right time and uh, with the engagement of all the stakeholders. So, uh, 2013, uh, there was an idea. We we were thinking about we we put priorities about the the issues. So under the strategy, what is going on in the United Arab Emirates as well as globally. So the, the biggest topic today, we're talking about the climate. So we thought the best uh, initiative that we should tackle or matter we should tackle is the climate. And uh, the, the idea came, okay, let's move forward with the program that preparing the, the youth uh, to, to take the leadership because it is a long term. I mean. Uh, when we talk about the climate, we, we don't expect like next year we'll solve the issue, <laughs> not even by 2030. So it's a continuous, very long-term uh, initiative. So uh, it came the idea, okay, let's go ahead and do it. And uh, uh, immediately we, uh, we look at the stakeholders and the partner who really will be effective in this. So um, having the UNDP, Mr. Saeed, uh, representing UNDP, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Supreme Council of Energy, all together with the Dubai uh, Electricity and Water Authority, Authority with the Dubai Carbon as the, the think tank uh, entity. So all together we sat and decided to move forward and do this initiative a program to be really a program where it's going to be a platform for all youth that will take forward to to take the leadership and lead uh, in terms of climate. So 2013, we were at New York. We signed the engagement with the United Nations to start up this uh, program. So um, the program, uh, at nutshell, it's uh, engagement of 40 uh, college students in the United Arab Emirates. And over the one year, we'll do all the preparation in terms of uh, trainings, uh, attending workshops, internships, um, uh, engagement uh, in uh, conferences outside United Arab Emirates with the help of uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. 
uh, all these together uh, really will bring the program to where, where will uh, achieve our objective. So we started this in 2014. We, started, we launched the program at the same summit where the Green Economy Summit was launched. And from that time, the youth or the student uh, engaged really did a big effort. It was, I mean, uh, let's say there was a challenge. I mean, it is first time for students to engage in programs, whereas tackling the climate and uh, whereas it's uh, an issue globally, even the biggest countries, they, they cannot find uh, one solution for it. So, um, but uh, we, we, we feel that th there is a big engagement, there is a big commitment from the youth and uh, that is uh, very uh, honestly a positive uh, message and that gives us the, the confidence that th this program even will continue further. So we went ahead with the program. We, uh, there was very systematic uh, calendar over the year. Um, and uh, yesterday there was the graduation ceremony for all the engaged students. And we were very much proud and happy to see everyone. They were happy, honestly. They felt that over the year they learned a lot and they transformed one of the projects is to transform the shipping t containers, uh, the scrapped one, to be to reutilize them to be a bus station. So they, they, uh, we work as in four groups. They transform these containers, but it's not like this because over the uh, doing the the project, they they learn how to do the project management, to work as a team. So there are a lot of skills that they learn from that program. And uh, I thank even the mentors that we selected from other uh, all entities within Dubai or United Arab Emirates that they supported, they put their experience and they work with the team to bring them together to achieve their programs. Uh, it was honestly some, uh, we feel it is uh, some of the big success in this uh, sector, well, we'll continue doing it. So today I was talking to uh, Dubai and she said, I'm going to engage in this program for this year. So uh, we want to put the, the talented of uh, youth to, to really become part of this program. This program, as we saw yesterday in the opening uh, speech of uh, His Excellency, the Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, and he put a big support for this program, and they want to even replicate it globally. Mm -hmm. So um, we're proud to see like some a know-how, a model starting from United Arab Emirates, and will be shared globally. And we'll be happy to see this. And uh, His Highness Sheikh Ahmed bin Saeed immediately after the graduation ceremony decided to double the number from 40 to 80. So this sort of quick decision comes from, from the leadership, from the partners, shows that how we committed. And this is very serious. I mean, when we're talking about such strategy and plans that uh, the, the government of United Arab Emirates put to achieve in 2020 or 2021, 2030, uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed looking at 2050, the la last parallel will be shipped uh, from UAE, will be happy. Because we want to support, we want to put an effort in United Arab Emirates youth to be the leadership. And uh, without prepare them, without put them engaged and tr uh, transfer the knowledge and uh, put them part of the business, we're not going to achieve it. So we're happy with this program. We're going to continue. Um, I got very good uh, messages and comments of, uh, after the openings, uh, after the uh, graduation ceremony. and. Uh, this is give us uh, a confident continuing and enlarging the program. I would like to ask you more about um, what is next for these graduates, but I want to go to Dubai first before I forget my question. Um, how do you think, what is the best way to motivate the youth to um, be aware, to be first interested in the topic of climate change and be aware of it? I'm a personal believer that if you are to fix any issue that is currently facing the youth, uh, you start with education systems and change starts within the classroom. Um, you know, we live in education systems and we've been through education systems, you know, with a huge emphasis on academics and exams and examinations. And I think it's time to, or we live in a time where we should sort of 
direct the energy to, or put more energy towards the importance of extracurricular activities. And through that, you engage the youth. You know, you can sit in a classroom and talk for hours about how important climate change is, and all you'll get is a group of 30 students who would just nod their heads and, you know, move on with their day. But when you take them seriously and when you show them that, no, this is your responsibility because you, will, you are the future of this country, you will one day grow up and you will be taking those leadership positions. When you make the youth feel important, when you make them feel like their opinion actually matters, that's when you get their attention. And I think that can be facilitated through you know, extracurricular workshops, through parliamentary debates um, that we've seen you know, replicated through different countries. And, and make them feel like they have the power to make a positive difference. And, and talk to them as if, you know, I think with a lot of issues, you get a lot of, exp I'm no way criticizing this panel, but um, you know, in a lot of issues, you always get these expert opinions and know you should do this. What about what do they want? What about what does the youth want to do? Or how, what about the ways that they want to facilitate change? Um, and I think it's very important to, as a first step, to listen to them and to, to, to provide ways that, uh, that would engage them you know, through school, through um, conferences uh, that are student-led, you know, that are student-led initiatives that are led by them. And, um, and you know, I think a similar, a similar program I've been a part of is the Model United Nations. So uh, it's, it's slowly getting increasing popularity within the country and what they do is, you know, they, it's student-led and uh, they get a group of, uh, of young people who debate issues that are currently be being debated at the UN that include issues like climate change. And once you put the youth in that mentality and you treat them as adults and you treat them as leaders, you create an atmosphere where you know that positive change is possible. So, yeah. That's a very good point. We, we, um, I read a report, uh, a survey by ESTA that mentioned uh, well, it, it asked the youth about their primary concerns and what their main issues are, and climate change was the least, uh, to them it was the least. Only 6% thought of it as a primary concern. So um, your suggestions could actually affect uh, that percent. I want to go to Davina and ask her about, um, well, the boy mentioned about facilitating climate change um, f for the youth. What about social media? Is, is that a good way to, uh, to encourage and, and raise awareness? Well, I, I spoke about slacktivism earlier. It's about people just liking a post on Facebook and feeling like they've contributed. And I think to shift away from that, to go back to earlier points, you know, empowering the youth is first and foremost. Education programs and um, hearing what they want to say and involving them on the grassroots level is most important. Once you've kind of got those basics right, it's about communicating the messages. And I think there um, needs to be a two-pronged approach, both the rational and the emotional. Uh, I think there's a lot of, you know, fear-mongering, and, and rightly so, if we don't make these changes, that it, it is going to be very impactful, but also rational and like, what are the benefits and, and how can you get involved and why we need you. And when you empower the youth and you give them that voice and you give them that platform, that's when I think you get mass buy-in. And social media is a great way to do that, but I think it's the, it's the add-on. You need to get the basics right, the education and the uh, engagement first. I want to go to, to Anne because um, you're leading an education program related to climate change. Can you talk more about this? Yeah, uh, as I said in the beginning, in 2009 we opened up this, we introduced this climate uh, ambassador education in Copenhagen. And in, in last year we actually expanded to like to be a global climate ambassador education, where we together with seven other countries try to like join all this uh, NGO, all this country who are working with involving children and youth to give the children and youth a voice together. And we released this uh, very report together with seven other countries. It was Nigeria, Zambia, Ghana, Sweden, Belgium, India and Denmark. Uh, and before I forgot it, I put a lot of them in the corner, so please take one, because I'm not taking them back to Denmark, they're quite heavy, so please take it. And the idea with this was like to, to as I said, give a voice for the children and youth, and let them have a voice about like what engaging them to combat uh, climate change. And the process was to like, uh, work together on a best practice in all those countries and the aim of it was like 12 
principles like in the middle from the children and youth themselves of what engaged them to work with climate change. And it could be like uh, working to like social media. I really agree with you that social media is not an aim, it's a tool. And what really was an open eye opener for the children, especially from Denmark, the children I'm working with, was that they could talk like face to face with children from, uh, no, not face to face, but through social media with uh, children from other parts of the world. This dialogue was like really an eye opener because kids in Denmark, they were like, they sometimes have like water in their cellar or stuff like that, but it's like, they don't really see this uh, climate change that is going around in the world. So an eye opener for them was to talk with kids from India that couldn't go to school because of flooding. Uh, and then they understood that uh, the country who is like making more pollution, most pollution is not the one who has suffered the most. And I think like to this dialogue, and to this best practice uh, and to the feeling that they really got involved and adults were listening to them. They were also giving a speech when the IPCC plenary meeting in Copenhagen uh, last year and that was really, they were so proud that actually a lot of uh, adults were listening to them. So I think that what we can do as adults is like uh, listen to them, take them serious, uh, give them responsible responsibility uh, and also like take a step back like in the education uh, we are having in Copenhagen it's we, we give the children knowledge about climate change and every half a year uh, 30 young kids between 12 and 14 is starting on my education and we give them knowledge but we also give them tools to act in a sustainable future. And I really often think about how can we talk about a sustainable future if we are not engaging the next generation. Uh, so so that's, that's the point like we are working with. That's, that's really what I think that, that hopefully can inspire all of you. That give the young people responsibility, take a step back and believe that they can do more than we know. So it seemed that your program started locally and then you expanded it globally by collaborating with other NGOs from different countries. Yeah. That seems like a, another good idea uh, to consider. I'm going to go to His Excellency Dr. Thani. Um, as, as Mr. Walid mentioned, that the, um, I mean, our founding father, Sheikh Zayed, mentioned uh, sustainability and it, there's no question that sustainability is at the top agenda of the UAE strategy. How do you communicate this to the to the youth and through what uh, what channels in your opinion? Sure, uh, before I answer this question, I know if you allow me to say two, two things. And, uh, when it comes to, to, the, to the children and youth and how we're going to communicate, I would like to highlight one of the initiatives which uh, launched a while ago in, uh, in the UAE, which is called uh, Heroes of UAE. My colleagues from uh, World Wide uh, Life uh, are here. It's one of the most successful campaigns which we did like six years ago, where we brought the children, uh, not experts, children to participate in a campaign. And the impact of, and the consequences uh, and the results from that campaign was really unbelievable. The children were pushing their parents and fathers to change their behaviors uh, within the house. So we have to bring the children uh, even uh, at the early stages, uh, throughout the campaigns, not, not only to ask them to do the things. We have to get them engaged, ask them to, to, to see how they're going to communicate the, the, the messages that we, that we want to deliver to the children. And the impact is going to be significant. Uh, this is one of the things that I would like to highlight. The other thing which is uh, a bit funny, uh, I know a colleague uh, from, uh, uh, from one of the institutions, who uh, start changing his, the behavior of his uh, children through uh, the reducing the pocket money, the daily pocket money, and, uh, depending on their cons water consumption. If they consume uh, more, they, he reduces the, the daily pocket money. So which forces them to change their behavior uh, uh, with the time. Uh, to answer the, your question, uh, within the UAE, we do a couple of things to, uh, to ensure that we deliver our uh, uh, messages to the youth. 
by directly talking to the to the children, to, by bringing those children on board through this uh, ca those campaigns like the Heroes of UAE, we bring the youth even on board in our uh, programs uh, by by uh, uh, having entrance, uh, uh, having them come understand what exactly we do. One of the things that we uh, we do on a yearly basis uh, during Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week, which is one of the exhibition we host in Abu Dhabi, we dedicate one full day for uh, for students and public, where we bring children, we uh, we force uh, schools to bring their students to come and see what exactly the UE is doing, what is the concept and how we're going, uh, uh, what we want from those uh, those youth. We, we uh, launched uh, an initiative uh, three years ago called uh, the Young Future uh, Energy uh, Leaders, where we bring uh, students, it's very similar to the Carbon Ambassadors, bring students, uh, graduated students, who just uh, finished their schools and about to get uh, into the market, um, into the working environments. We bring them and they, they take them through a f one full year program where they, they have uh, dedicated models and courses and they, they do even uh, some uh, visits to certain countries to ensure that they, ha they, they, uh, uh, they see what, exa what, the, others, what uh, the other countries are doing in the, in the fields. So there are so many initiatives uh, that the UE are doing and uh, uh, we always, as, as a government, are looking, looking for uh, initiatives, for ideas, and how we can uh, engage the youth and uh, try to change their behaviors. What do you think of that, Dubai? I mean, do you have any ideas? I mean, I'm putting you on the spot, I know. <laughs> do you have any ideas? I mean, for, uh, if we have any academics here, or uh, we have lots of experts here as well, um, what would you tell them? What should they do? Um, to engage the youth, and uh, it doesn't have to be through schools if they yeah. cannot. What, what other ways can you think of? I think we need to make the issue of climate change and in general environmental issues more appealing to the youth. And the only way of doing that is looking at um, where they're hanging out virtually. Um, so that goes back to the point of social media, you know. Uh, creating online campaigns that, um, you know, as you said, some, in my opinion, I think that Social media, you cannot look at the youth without keeping in mind social media. It's just impossible in this day and age. Um, and I personally am an advocate for social media. But I think uh, once you look at social media and you create a social campaign uh, to raise awareness about climate change, to raise awareness about how you know, th this issue will not only affect country X or country Y, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna affect the, the, the global community at whole. And that would enable students um, in the younger generation to look at themselves as not only citizens of this country, but as also citizens of the world. Mm -hmm. And once you create that mentality, you secure that they will feel a responsibility towards climate change. They would feel a responsibility towards issues of the environment. So, and I think, you know, I think it also starts in the classroom. It's really important uh, to look at how teachers are addressing the issue of climate change, you know. Um, addressing it in a way where you believe in the youth, you know, you tell the youth this is what's happening. If you don't do a change, you know, it's going to go downhill from here. So it's instilling the responsibility uh, through teachers and through classrooms. And I think a lot of issues that are addressed in education system always have uh, a blame factor. You know, it's always like they look at our generation as this generation that is, I won't say useless, but there's always this negative uh, negative idea towards our generation. Um, and I think changing that and, and, and looking at the youth as a positive factor would actually have you know, amazing effects and, and would increase awareness on issues related to the, uh, to the green economy. I would yeah. want to go to Davina to, talk, to ask about social media. But before that, I want to remind the audience that you can prepare your questions, because after that, we'll take questions from you Just in five minutes. Um, so, Davina, I want to ask you, can social media really change behavior? Can it influence behavior? Absolutely. I'm, I'm a firm believer in uh, grassroots campaigns starting off organically, you know, education and face-to-face -face meetings and really bringing the youth in on a hands-on level. But the great position that the United Arab Emirates is, is in is that you guys are so you know, it's so much on the agenda here and it's so important to you. You've really got the opportunity to start these initiatives. You've got the support of the leadership and, and, and build these great things. And what social media can do is provide momentum and scalability. And I mean, for all its faults and all its praise, the one thing social media does well is mass communication and, and, and momentum. So if things start small, generate, um, you know, organically and they work well here, 
that's really where the power of social media comes in and really position you know, the UAE as the leader that it is in this field. Just yesterday, Shahid Rashid uh, tweeted uh, reminding the government officials of their commitment uh, t for, from two years ago, and I think that supports your argument that this kind of uh, it does encourage people to actually do what they, what they should do and um, to encourage also commitment. Um, I was wondering if you have a question. Alan, we have a question here, yes. please, sir. Hi, it's uh, Tanzid Alam here. I'm the Director of Climate and Energy with uh, WWF in the UAE. Um, it's a really good panel, so congratulations to all of you on this. Um, I had a kind of an observation and a question for Dr. Thani and for Dubai as well. Um, one observation is that with climate change, it's the generation of today who are the decision makers who need to take the action to make sure that the youth actually avoid the worst impacts. However, what I'm not seeing is really the youth involved in policy decision making. So what prospects do you think there are to actually get the youth involved in policy making in the country and decision making? Okay, thank you. I think that's clear. You might want to ask that question right around the world. <laughs> um, but please. You want to say something else? No, I just want to okay. So, Dr. Thani, was it the question is to Dr. Thani, right? Okay, so yeah. can you please answer? No. A couple of things that we're doing uh, to ensure that the youth are engaged in, the, uh, in those discussions. Uh, one of them is the uh, most of the, I can assure you, most of the people who are developing the, the strategy within the UAE and within the climate change field are, are really young. And they're very uh, linked and attached to the, uh, to the uh, social media and uh, to the youth within the market. The other thing that we usually do, we take in consideration the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, interests of the youth and what exactly they, they need through the platforms, the events that we're hosting. And we do some surveys uh, through our participations and our engagement with the, with the youth, what exactly they are looking for from us when it comes to uh, climate change uh, policy and uh, uh, strategies. So for sure, the, the youth is an integral part of uh, our, uh, our, our work. Uh, we invest in uh, students who are going to, to work in the mitigation and adaptation of the market. Uh, uh, for example, the scholarship from uh, DIWA, which they send students to, to, to study the market, and they come back uh, with, with the knowledge and uh, the, the, uh, the expertise that they bring on board. Master and Suit are, uh, is another example. The, the students who graduate, we're, we're bringing uh, students not only from the UE, but also from uh, all over the world where they can come study the market and we usually take their, uh, their studies forward because it's, it's very linked to the practicalities the, uh, of the implementation of, of the policies. Those are a couple of examples which we do to ensure the youth are uh, taking consideration the policy developments. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to say um, another important way to make sure the youth are involved in policy making is uh, the creation of youth advisory boards throughout different uh, governmental institutions. Um, I'm a member of a youth advisory board for the uh, Sheikha Salama bint Hamdan Foundation. And what they do really is they just give us a space to talk, you know, about different issues, about different policies uh, related to the youth. And I think, you know, creating that within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or throughout different government institutions will just give a direct access to the youth for them to, you know, voice their opinion and, and, and see how they can help with their own ways with issues related to climate change. Alan, we have one quick question here. You know, it's, uh, UAE is a young country, and it's a good place for change. And uh, uh, do you have any initiative to change, to do some change in the syllabus from elementary school up to high school, which include a continuous uh, uh, syllabus on, on, on environment, sustainability, and so on? Because this is uh, the heart of changing because uh, engagement, it requires some knowledge and continuous knowledge. Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. So it all has to start early. I think what, what he does every time, he asks so many questions and uh, we are obliged to answer his question. He's, I mean, he, he's in D1. He knows what, uh, exactly what we do in terms of syllabus. And, uh, <laughs> but should, should, the, should the education start at a very young no, no. level? Yeah, well, this is what I'm saying. I mean, I have a kid, and uh, I sit with them uh, like daily, and I review whatever they have in their books. So today, the education is totally different. There are a lot of uh, uh, programs, uh, not only uh, looking at the education in terms of books or uh, 
uh, lectures, but even a program that there is, uh, I mean, engagement between the society, the government, as well as the schools. So, um, in terms of renewable, I'll give you very much example. I mean, today, if, uh, if you open the uh, elementary school uh, books, that you're gonna find they speaking about the energy efficiency. They speak about renewables, about the behaviors of the individuals, how they're gonna conserve the, um, the energy and uh, save the world. So uh, a lot of practices and there are, there's very clear plan and strategy in terms of education, how to engage the new generation to the plans and strategy of the federal government. So uh, and, uh, what, what I see, we're very much confident that there is engagement, there is a knowledge building in terms of uh, best practices. And uh, uh, what we see even, um, they, they pick up and very easily now when you communicate with the, with the children is even faster to pick up the things rather than when you communicate with my side, I mean my age. So uh, there is a, a very rich program. One quick point from Anna. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so from, I'm, I'm totally agree with you and I think of course that you should educate the children when they are very young. But I not only think that it's the teacher, I think also like the last two days uh, I learned a lot about like sonar panel and a lot of technical solutions. And I think that we should be like much better to communicate to the children because uh, learn about the climate and fighting climate change can be fun. Uh, but we should be much better, example, the smart city uh, session after this. Smart city is what a lot of children think is very interesting. But when we're developing a smart city, we also have to think about how do we communicate this new solution to the children. Because they are taking over from us and they are the one who should use the smart city. Yeah. Alan, we have one last question here and then I'll hand it back to you. Um, it's, it's really a, a reflection, I have to be fast. Thank you so much for this great panel. I think uh, the way, uh, it's a pleasure to see you today. You said something about the classroom. Actually, we need to have our youth be happy to go to school. I don't think they're very happy to go to school these days. So there is a revamp that needs to be done there. And there is a, a learning to be learned from the Australia's model now. They are revamping the curriculum system they have, especially sustainability, they're integrating that. And I think that's something maybe on the federal level to be um, focused more on the coming time. Edna, thank you, and thank you all. Super, thank you very much for that observation. Alan, would I leave there it back to you to, back, to wrap it up? Um, I'm going to be a big trouble if I go back there because we'll never finish up. And forgive me, I'll have to wait and he'll have to bring us into the Smart City session, but we're running a little behind time. Really, really sorry. Alan, my dear. We apologize to anyone who has any questions. You can later talk to the panelists uh, directly. Thank you so much for all your insights. This was very useful. And thank you for being a very active audience. And again, let me add my thanks to all of our panelists here and indeed to our absolutely wonderful moderator who has been just uh, great to be with us here, Alanud Almaty. So I think you would all agree she did a fabulous job. Thank you so much. <laughs>